Today we're going to talk about ballistic shields, the different types of ballistic shields, and the way you can layer those items into your operational mission. Hello, my name is James Argus. I'm the CEO of B4DI. We're here today to, to talk about the relationship between Contech, Armor Express, and some of the other companies that we partner with to build solutions to increase the safety and capability of our law enforcement and military um, customers. My background is I left the U.S. Marshals as a senior chief um, over uh, many of our tactical programs and I have uh, decades of experience in our high-risk fugitive apprehension mission. I also spent time, uh, approximately seven years, with uh, special operations units within the Army. So today we have some of our ballistic shield capabilities and some of the, the structures and shapes. Um, when, you, when you think of shields, oftentimes you are familiar with the movies and, and television shows where there's a big shield and people are shooting it and there's spark coming off of it. and they're That's not the way shields really work in real life. Um, they have different levels of protection just like your body armor, just like armored vehicles have. Some of them are handgun rated protection, some of them are rifle rated protection. Um, the, this, uh, also speaks to the different sizes of shields. You're gonna have team shields, which are larger shields, which are gonna protect the operator as well as many of the team members. And then you have smaller, more agile, um, individual shields that will protect the uh, individual user. And they have different uses. Again, the team shield is trying to protect a larger section of the operator and his teammates behind him. Whereas the individual shield, the smaller shield, is trying to help supplementally protect the areas that are exposed by an operator. Generally, our armor protects this portion of our body, but it leaves open most of our, all of our head, all of our throat, our shoulders, the soft points underneath our arms, and our firing, um, both our strong and weak arms, hands. Um, so when you use the smaller shields, you're able to protect most of your face, all of the soft tissue of your throat, your upper area here, your non-shooting arm, the areas, the exposed areas where officers and military are often shot, where under their armpits, and most of their, um, their, both their extremities, which are also areas that are often targeted unintentionally by their threats, just because we focus on the weapon system and bad guys focus on it and they'll fire, and they are generally seeing that in their, in their vision as they fire, and so you get a lot of hits in and around the hand area. So if we're able to protect those areas with some of these areas while still being able to be mobile, fast, be able to deploy either a handgun or a rifle from them, they, it increases our capability and increases the survivability of our, of our operators. Um, I would say that we have looked at the shields um, in different ways. We look at it from ergonomics, um, the way that your body moves, the way that your body um, holds things, the, the way to help minimize muscle use and maximize joints and bone structure. When, you, when we actually were designing some of the shields, we were cut the armor down to where it was at the smallest square inch pro while providing the most coverage. Um, and then you have to, you know, you have to consider what tools you're going to use. Um, you know, if you're carrying a team shield, it's probably a good idea to wear a helmet um, because if you get a high strike on the shield, it might rock back and hit you in the head. Um, if you have an opponent that's above you, you know, then you want to make sure that you're protected as he has a, maybe have a, a better vantage point to attack you from. Um, when you're carrying your kit, you know, you want to make sure you have access, you know, especially with a shield in most instances, whether it's a handgun or a rifle, um, it's going to be more difficult to reload. While you may be able to shoot and move as quickly, um, especially with the individual shields, your reload times are going to be different. So ensuring that when you're setting your kit up, you have the ability to get to whatever tools you need to reload or create a, manage a malfunction with either hand. So, um, you know, tools like one instance is a, there's a tool, uh, a backplate from a company called Bad Art Tactical. Um, that allows you to place your reloads in the same angle that you have your handgun. So when your reloads with a one-handed reload with a handgun are faster. Um, you need to take in consideration your sling if you're running a rifle with any of these, what type of sling you're gonna use because when you're out 
and you have to continue to fight, you're gonna transition to that handgun. Is that sling hanging the rifle down too low where now that's become an impediment on the way that you operate? Um, same thing with your kit. If you, if you stack too much gear on the front of your kit, your arm's gonna be out here and that puts more work you put more muscle work in, whereas with the closer you can keep your, your hand and arm vertically, the less uh, stress on your muscles, more on the joints. Uh, and there's some other systems that we use, hooks and straps to help minimize the weight of the shields. And again, they range, you know, these are all handgun shields, but we make, we are uh, current, we manufacture some really strong, uh, capable rifle shields. Um, the difference is, is that most rifle shields start off in the mid-20s and range up to about 40-something pounds, which really will wear an operator out. And that means that you have to take into consideration you know, fatigue for the operator, but also your environment. And if you're targeting a person that you know just ran into a, 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 a one room with a handgun, you, maybe you don't take the rifle shield on that operation. So tailor your, your armor to your threat, and that goes the same across, whether it's the uh, small individual shields, the team shields, or some of the mobile products that Contact is developing to help protect um, our law enforcement and military customers. Again, my name is James Ergus. Um, I'm with B4DI. Uh, if you have any questions, if you uh, are looking for advice, solutions, um, ways to layer armor into your operations, reach out to myself or reach out to Mike Witt with uh, Contech Industries and we'll take care of you.